are the backbone of our society. They are not inherently good or bad. Rules enable and disable. The arena, cartable, magic circle, temple, stage, screen, tennis court, court of justice, are all in form and function playgrounds. All are temporary worlds within the ordinary world, dedicated to the performance of an act apart. When you entered this space, did you take a look around? Did you perhaps discuss with your company where to sit, chose a seat and then settled down? What did you do when somebody wanted to walk past you in search of a good seat? Did you stand up or did you move your legs aside? And when the lights started dimming, did you lower your voice to a whisper and quickly checked if you put your phone on airplane mode? And when that speaker finally entered the stage, did you feel how the whole space, the whole room, quieted down almost completely? Chances are you did, because these are the rules of this space. But what would you have done if you had walked in to find the room completely stripped of its signature red seats? Or what if the lights never started dimming? What if the speaker never entered the stage and left you all waiting in the dark? Which rules would you have followed then? These rules, codes of conduct and mutual agreements, they are how we shape our world, our society. They make it possible for us to navigate the, the complicated chaos of our lives. So what happens if the rules we all know so well suddenly change. That is the core of our artistic research at Playfield. How to change the rules, or how to create a parallel world, a space in which different rules apply, or a space where the invisible rules of our daily lives are suddenly exposed. We create performances in which our audience experiences a new perspective, a new set of rules. For instance, this is hashtag to bias. It is the second part of our Big Data trilogy, a trilogy about the ethical questions concerning big data. And hashtag to bias is about algorithms. And when we started working on this theater piece five years ago, we quickly discovered that the majority of our audience didn't really know what an algorithm was exactly. And so we had to explain it to them in the piece itself. And what we did was we placed our audience in the shoes of a programmer. Because what better way is there to understand an algorithm than to build one yourself? The piece follows the dramaturgy of an algorithm. So the audience starts by choosing their own categories, their own parameters, gathering data, and then making three structured decisions. At the end of the piece, the algorithm that they have created together, 
it is used on themselves. So they become the subject of their own system. And it becomes painfully clear how it is impossible not to put your own biases and prejudices into developing an algorithm when the people who do not answer to the demands of their own system, their own algorithm, are asked to leave the performance. They have become their own collateral damage. So by letting our audience choose their own categories, by letting them rate each other on, based on these uh, categories, based on data that they have gathered themselves, we are able to pinpoint the dangers of blindly trusting an algorithm. They get to experience how it's impossible not to put your own biases into the algorithm. Well, every time that we perform this theater piece, it starts a conversation between us and our audience about the pros and cons of big data and algorithms. Should we blindly trust programmers who are developing these algorithms, who are putting their biases into the system that's making up the rules, if we have just experienced that we cannot even trust ourselves? And with this kind of interactive experiences, this kind of interactive performances, we play with the boundaries between actor and spectator. We invite our audience on stage to join the conversation. We give them a responsibility. And by doing that, we as artists, we forfeit part of our control over the outcome of a performance. We give them something to say in the matter. Maybe a chance to play the game with us. Every performance is a playing field. And each game we play on it is different. When a set of rules suddenly changes drastically, we call that a new normal. And you all know this term, because at the beginning of March 2020, it became painfully clear that we were to be confronted with the biggest new normal of our century. And even though it was, and still is, extremely difficult and painful for a lot of people, we did get to experience what it is like to enter a new normal collectively. We got to experience how this enforcing these new sets of rules create a new perspective. A perspective from which maybe new realizations arose. Maybe you had to commute a lot for work and now you just don't want to anymore. Perhaps being locked up inside made you realize that there's a lack of greenery in your area and now you want to change that. Or perhaps you just need more time for yourself. You want more time with your family and friends and more rest. Maybe you just don't want to go back entirely to how it used to be. So, being ripped out of your normal set of rules, it kind of forces us to inspect and reflect. It creates a distance from which we can look back at our previous normal, our previous set of rules. The truly unique trait of sapiens is our ability to create and believe fiction. All other animals use their communication system to describe reality. And we use our communication system 
to create new realities. Our rules are fiction. Money is fiction. Money has value because we all believe it has. It's an agreement, like all rules in our society are. And our ability to create and believe in fiction, it's an extraordinary power. It's a tool, and we use that tool to shape our world and our society. And we at Playfield use that tool to shape our artistic expression. Now, why do we think that it's so important to actively engage our audience in our work? Why do we need our audience to tell their story? Perhaps you are thinking that it is because we are lazy artists and we want our audience to do all the work for us. But to us it's all about empowerment. We want you to feel empowered. You see, every day we are flooded with so much information. And most of the time it's information that doesn't really make us feel good about this world. Information that kind of gives us the feeling that everything is out of our control and that there is nothing we can do to change it. But if rules are fiction, are they as impenetrable as we think they are? We give our audience an active part in our work so we can play with the power versus powerlessness of the fiction. In our fictions, they can change the rules. They can change the game and therefore redirect the narrative. We want you to actively choose how to play the game. So, as you go through your day, we want to invite you to wonder which fictions might need to be rewritten. Where should we use our collective power to create a new normal? Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>